Okay, we're going to look at diffusion and osmosis. These are both ways in which molecules can get from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell, and we're going to talk about concentration gradients. So here you have a picture of a desert. Every living cell exists in a liquid environment that needs to survive. It may not always seem that way, yet even in this picture of the desert, the cells of those cacti plants, scorpions, and vultures are all bathed in liquid. One of the most important functions of the cell membrane is to regulate the movement of dissolved molecules from the liquid on one side of the membrane to the liquid of the other. So we have passive transport does not require energy input from a cell. So make sure you understand what passive transport is. And there are so molecules can move across the cell membrane through passive transport. They don't need the assistance of energy, which is ATP. We're going to get into that. Or they don't need facilitated transport with the help of proteins, which you guys know are in the cell membrane. So there are two types. There's diffusion and there is osmosis. We're going to talk about diffusion first. So in a solution, particles move constantly. First off, in a solution, there are two types of players that create the solution. Hopefully you remember them, the solute and the solvent. So keep that in mind. See how this is all coming back to you? So back to in a solution, the particles, the particles are going to collide with one another and tend to spread out randomly. As a result, the particles tend to move from an area where they are more concentrated, concentrated means they have a lot more there, more dense, to an area of less concentration. Think of it as a slide. At the top of the slide you have a lot of molecules, and at the bottom of the slide there isn't any. It's very easy for these little molecules to just go right down the slide to the area where there are less molecules. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane. Now we've talked about semi uh, selectively permeable and that's going to allow, it's going to choose what molecules go through. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, people always think, oh if I put my textbook under my pillow I'm going to learn my biology through osmosis. Have you ever heard that phrase? Um, obviously that is wrong because osmosis is diffusion of water. Diffusion is the actual, uh, you know, act of going from a high concentration to a low concentration. So diffusion, um, again, it goes down the concentration gradient. As you can see with the dropper here in the picture, this is very concentrated. And when these drops go into just a beaker of water, there's obviously not a lot of the dye. So what happens is it's going to spread out. And if we had a, another picture over here, you'd see it as a very faint green. So we just talked about that. There are three types of solutions. Isotonic, which is right there on the left. I guess here we'll go like this so we can talk about isotonic. In isotonic, the concentration of solutes is the same inside and outside of the cell. It doesn't matter if it's a plant cell or an animal cell. The concentration is in, as you may already figure out, equilibrium. Hypertonic solution has higher solute concentration than the cell. Think of, oh, this, yeah, hyper, okay. So think of hyper ER as having lots of lots of it higher 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 and then we have hypo which is low O for low solution has a lower solute content than the cell and so that's gonna make it you know kind of blow up so hypo think of a uh, hypo the, the O I just remember is being like swollen Whereas the hyper, I think of it being as um, kind of shriveled. So some molecules can only diffuse through transport proteins. 
Some molecules cannot easily just fuse across the cell membrane. So then we're going to talk a little bit about facilitated diffusion. A few molecules such as sugar glucose seem to pass through the cell membrane more quickly than they should. One might think, you, you might think this, that these molecules are too large or too strong, strongly charged to uh, cross the membrane, and yet they diffuse across pretty easily. So I'm pretty sure you're asking yourself, man, Miss Quist, how does this happen? Here's the answer, guys. The cell membranes have protein channels that make it easy for certain molecules to cross the membrane. Red blood cells, for example, have a cell membrane protein with an internal channel that allows glucose to pass through it. Only glucose can pass through this channel, and it can move through in either direction. This cell membrane protein is said to facilitate, facilitate means to help, the diffusion of glucose across the membrane. This process is known as facilitated diffusion. Hundreds of different protein channels have, have been found that, allowing, that allow particular substances to cross, to cross um, across the membrane. Although facilitated diffusion is fast and specific, keep in mind it is still diffusion. Therefore, a net movement of molecules across a cell membrane will occur only if there is a higher concentration of the particular molecule on one side than on the other. Again, because facilitated diffusion, because it is diffusion, this movement does not require the use of energy. And that's the end.